What's up YouTube, welcome back. Today we're gonna to take a look at a Microsoft SQL into a question. Marked is hard, let's get into it. So this one's called premium versus freemium and marked is hard on stressfresh.com as I said. Our task is to find the total number of downloads for paying and non-paying users by date. Include only records where non-paying customers have more downloads than paying customers. The output should be sorted by earliest date first and contain three columns, date, non-paying downloads and paying downloads. Let's take a look at the expected output to see what that looks like. When I have a date, the amount of downloads from non-paying users and the amount of downloads from paying users, but only if the non-paying downloads are higher than the paying downloads. Downloads of paying and non-paying users, that is. As you can see, 15 here is higher than 14, 45 higher than nine and so on. So we only output these rows. Anyways, we have three tables to use here. MS user dimension, MS probably standing for Microsoft, which has a user ID and an account ID. So this pretty much links a user to their account ID. And we have an account ID seemingly because in this other table, MS ac dimension, Microsoft account dimension, there is a flag whether that account is a paying customer or non-paying customer. I guess the reasoning is they could to switch to a different account and then it would be paying. You could instead just change that flag as well, but yes, maybe whenever, the, whenever there's a new account, when you switch to another account, a paying account or family account or something for that platform, then you would get a new account ID and then it would say paying or non-paying. Anyways, this is what we have. We have one more table that's called MS Download Facts, which has the amount of downloads per date and user right here. And that's what we're gonna to need to get the amount of downloads for paying and non-paying users for sure. So let's go through the problem statement again. We should find the total number of downloads for paying and non-paying users by date. So we need to group by date later on should include only records where non-paying customers have more downloads than paying customers. That's what I meant. So this value needs to be higher than this value. And the output should be sorted by earliest date first. We need to put an ordering in there and contain three columns being date, non-paying downloads and paying downloads. So we're not gonna group by paying, non-paying. We actually want different columns. Yes. We don't want a value that says paying, not paying. And then the download amount, we want a column per non-paying and paying customer. All right, so let's get into this by thinking about what we need or what we should do first. So we want to get downloads for paying and non-paying customers. And then we want to do this filtering of the non-paying customer amount, download amount being higher than the paying customer download amount. And then we also want to do an ordering. Yep. So I'll try to get the amount of downloads for paying and not paying users per day first. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to join these tables first. So I'm going to select star from MS user dimension. Let's call that actually the, yeah. It's the first table, let's call it user. I'm omitting an E here. If I spelled it user, it would collide with a keyword in SQL. So I'm gonna skip the E and yes, I'm gonna join this other table, MS account dimension. Because here I want to, I know in the first table I have the user ID and account ID, but if I want to look up whether they're actually paying or not, I need to get this table here and therefore I need to join by account ID to connect them. So in this case, user.account ID should equal account.account ID and that should work. And now I think I couldn't just use this table only to look up whether they're paying or not because the download fact table, which is the last one we need to join, this one only has user ID and then downloads. So we could go from here 
use user ID to go to the lookup of the account ID and then use the account ID to actually look up whether they're paying or not. We can go straight from user ID to the paying status or not. So we're gonna join MS Download Facts as well. Let's call that Facts. And for this one, we need the user ID again. So user.user ID should be should be facts.user ID. Just double check here. These are actually called user ID, not just ID in some cases. Nice. That should do the trick. That should join everything. Yeah, so this just joins all the tables. That's pretty much the first step, what we need to do. And yeah, we see we have the paying, non-paying customer flag here. We have the date and we have the amount of downloads, which is all we should really need to get to the next part, which is getting the amount of downloads per paying and non-paying customers and per date. So in order to do that, we're gonna select date. We only have one date column in here in the downloads table. And then in order to get that download count, uh, download sum, actually, we're gonna use a sum function, of course. And then, yeah, since we want to get this into a column, a separate column, instead of doing a group by the paying status, we will use a case statement to only get this value of the downloads if they are non-paying or paying. So when paying customer, when that flag is no, then we want to take the value of the downloads column and otherwise we're gonna take zero in that sum calculation. What that does is that gets us the amount of downloads of non-paying customers because we only take the download value if they are not paying and then we sum it up. If they are paying, the value becomes zero and it's not added to the sum and that should work. If we do the same thing for paying customers, we get that amount as well. I'm just using the same order as they want in the expected output of date, non-paying and paying. So we're gonna change this name, column name to paying. And here we want to check if they are paying. So paying customer equals yes. Then we want to take downloads and otherwise zero. Let's remove the comma here, select that from all these tables. And we need to group by one, the first column date. And that should give us this amount we're looking for. Let's try to run that. Actually, we can already take care of the ordering. Order by one as well. Just gonna order by the first column in ascending order, which is what we want. And yeah, you can see we had a bunch of rows here and Donald numbers look accurate. We have the 16th here, we have 50 non-paying and 14 Donalds of paying users to use the right terminology actually. And yeah, we have more rows in the output than we actually need. That's because we didn't take care of that condition of the downloads of non-paying users being higher than the downloads of paying users. So that's what we still need to do. And yeah, we want to filter basically on these two values, one of the two being greater than the other. So once again, we're at the situation where we have to filter on aggregate functions, which we can do by using the having keyword. But the cool thing and the takeaway from this video maybe, which is not really in my other videos, is that you can actually have a aggregate function. Sum is an aggregate function. It aggregates more values into a single value. We can have these on either side of the comparison. So we can say this value should be higher than this other value. And both of these values are actually still an aggregation.
so not like a static value that you can check, but it's actually a calculation that still needs to take place. And that is only possible using having. So if you do this now, let's see whether I pasted the correct things in the right order. Yes, yeah, so the non-paying customer amount, download amount should be higher than the one of the paying ones. And that gives us the same output as the expected output has. So if I run this again, it's going to be accepted. And that's pretty much it for that question. There's another way of doing this. If you're not familiar or comfortable with having it, you can transform this whole thing into subquery. That's usually the case when we use having, we can just select everything from this table and then filter using where. And there we can say where non-paying should be higher than paying and it's going to do the same thing. Oh yeah, I need to give this table a name. Let's call that downloads. Oh, that's actually already a name. So yeah, let's just do this. Let's just call this A4. <laughs> yeah, just to showcase that this is possible. So now we can use where because the value of paying and non-paying has already been calculated and it becomes a static value that we can look up. It's not something we still need to calculate using the sum function, that aggregate function, and that way it works. Could also transform this into CTE and yeah, put it on top of the query. Uh, this one. So with a as, and then we can select star from a where actually non paying is higher than paying. And yeah, it's going to do the same thing. Still accept it. Just a matter of preference. I like using the having keyword because that's what it was built for pretty much. But yeah, this can actually be seen as very structured and organized and readable as well. So that's complete for that question. If you want to give this one a try, I'm going to leave a link to stratastretch.com down in the video description below, and you can check this question out. Maybe get a subscription. It's going to help out the channel if you go through my link. And apart from that, I'm going to see you in another video. Bye-bye.